Anna Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography and today we're going to talk about Adobe Camera Raw's lens correction. I have already done videos on these tabs up here and then I will continue on and then I will also talk about these guys up here. If you haven't started the video from the beginning which is in the basics please go to SullivanJPhotography.com and click on the YouTube tab and it will be in the Photoshop area. Okay so I'm going to show you several different images but um, I want to explain that each one of them has a specific amount of problems and what I do is actually fix my problems once I see them from the very beginning and then I start my post work. I have done videos saying how I go into Lightroom and do some of my basic tools uh, on the steps of photographing my raw images. I highly recommend if you're going to be a professional photographer to photograph in the raw format so you really have the capability of really going for those images when you're doing post-production work. So over here to the left or to the right <laughs> left. already starting fun here. Profile. This is where especially those wide angle lenses that you have. If you click on the enable lens profile right here, it will do its best, Adobe Camera Raw, to know what lens that I used. So this is, you can go into default, there's also an auto and a custom area and I'll put on my blog some more information on that but we're just going to give you some of the video tips right here. I am a Canon user, but if you have various uh, different cameras, then you can go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, Adobe Camera Raw has done an excellent uh, job of adding all of the different kinds of lenses that are out there. Uh, you, let's show you the before and after. It's not that drastic on this image. When you really get into the wide angles is when you really can see the difference and I'll start showing you a little bit about on more about lens profiles later on but with this image I really want to get into the color again correction amount if you have distortions you can fix them here and your vignetting say if it's dark in this area you can fix it there but I personally like to go in the manual section to really get into the correction amount I don't really use these tools ever tell you the truth so on this image we're going to talk about color so in order to do that, I really want to get up to, I'm using my, sh my um, sh uh, what is a space bar to move the image. So once you see, I'm going to do a right click and go to 100%. And then I will use my space bar and get over here so you can see some of the chromatic aberration problems that I'll have. Actually, it's not too bad, but I will go in. I think over here to the left so you can use that. I'm going to use several different ways to view things just so you can see what ACR has. So as you can see there is a blue fringe to it. What is chromatic aberration? Well basically it is where the sensor can't distinguish the drastic change in the color information or the light information. The whites here and the greens, dark greens in here are having a problem when it comes to to matching them up so there is issues with that and like I said it's awesome that Adobe Camera Raw you click over here to the right and once I click on remove chromatic aberration you will see this disappear so let's do that and voila my blues are gone. So if you have more problems with the colors you can actually go in and play with these tools here, these scrubby tools and and fix this area in here that if you're having more issues which sometimes I do but this is pretty good right here just going from the before and after and boom much better image. So let's go on to the next photograph so I can talk to you about the manual section that has to do more I feel when you're working with um, structures and lines. So let's go on to that one right now. 
Okay, so this second image is not the best image, but it is perfect when it comes to lens correction. And this is where we're at right here. We're in the manual mode. And as you can see, these little tabs over here or these little icons tell you what each area will do when you go off either to the left or the right. So if I want to bulge my image a little bit more coming forward, then that's what will happen when I go to the left. If I go to the right, it will actually bring it in more. And that will have to do with um, either you want to manipulate your image or you're just, it has to do with those wide angle lenses sometimes have some issues. So you want to fix that distortion. The verticals will help you line up your poles and uh, usually I actually don't line that up until after I've rotated my image but let's just show you by typing the V key you can see that the pole is lined up pretty good and using the V key shows your grid and then also up here at the top you can click on the P uh, this preview if you want but if you type or push the P key you can do the before which is what's showing it and then you go back and forth with the P key so that's the preview of what I've done so far so the horizontal again it shows you what's going to happen as you move it off to the left and if you move it off to the right it's going to show you over here what it's going to do to the image when you move it off to the right and say if you don't like that and you just want to go back to the beginning just double click on this area right in here and it'll start you straight from the beginning if you want to rotate you it tells you you can ro it's going to rotate in a counterclockwise so there you go if you want to rotate to the right you can use the go off to the right and the clockwise area and you can again do your V key to see if things are lining up nicely for you. Now if you noticed here this little gray area basically is no information on the image anymore because you pulled and distorted the image itself and all the pixels. So if you were to save this you would have this there would be no information in the object. You can go ahead and open in Photoshop and do content aware information uh, doing look up content aware I'll show you that a different time but you can use that tool and add the information um, to the image but content aware has issues say over here to the left you can see there's a lot of information and trying to copy that and add it can be a problem and it or it just takes a long time so if you have an image that's soft and doesn't have that much information like this over here that's great content aware will work perfectly but over here on this left side there's going to be issues on the content aware so just be aware of that either you're going to cr you can crop it if you want or like I said you can use content aware and add some information to the image or you can use the scale so if I want to scale it up as you can see it's going to make it larger just like it's showing you over here to the right and if you want to scale it back it's going to make the image go smaller so right here it's pretty much you can see that I wouldn't have to crop the image if I didn't want to but as you can see here look it's already starting to bow a little bit so there's certain things that you would have to play with back and forth but actually to tell you the truth once you get to learn these tools you're gonna know where to go to first and what to manipulate or change up when uh, you're as soon as you see your image the more you play the more you learn that's that's a great little thing to to keep in mind so don't get frustrated on these different tools just go ahead and play with them um, I'm just pushing buttons while we're talking I do not use the lens vignetting I don't like to play with it here I will show you in the next video over here I'll talk about the grain and here is where it posts crop vignetting we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video tutorial so let's go to the one more image real quick just to talk about the lens correction 
Okay, so for the last part of this video series or of this video tutorial on lens correction, I want to show you quickly the two images that started this whole Adobe Camera Raw series. The image on the top is the before and obviously the one on the bottom is the after. So what I did was I took three images and merged them together in uh, Photoshop. But it was an ugly day and I thought, what the heck, I just, I don't know when I'm going to be back into Arizona and check out the Painted Desert. I didn't have time to wait for the sun setting. We were off to another adventure. So I just took the shot anyways. And I believe this is even handheld. I can't remember. So I went and took this image because it was a fun day and I went ahead and changed it to this beautiful image that I enjoy and uh, remember as a great day in Arizona hiking with my husband. So let's quickly just look at the DNG and again if you haven't looked at any of these video tutorials from the beginning please go to SullivanJPhotography.com and uh, check out the YouTube tab. So if we go into the lens correction area you'll see here this is how I transformed all of the information in manual to make this straight and of course this is I will also go on and show you how I um, completed this image because this is not complete as you can tell I haven't cropped it I haven't uh, went ahead and changed any of the uh, you'll see the sky and all that stuff because I finish off with these and I also used these tools up here to fix this image so again if you have any questions, I always say at the end of my video tutorials, please go to SullivanJPhotography.com and click on that contact tab and send me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So have some fun with your lens corrections, play with your profile, your color, and your manual, and have a good time either fixing your image or manipulating your image. Have a great day!